Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. In this video, we'll cover a number of RetroPie tips. Some you may already know, others you may not. If you want to see if you're interested in these tips or follow along, I'll place a link down below. To go along with this video, I also created the RetroPie tips page, which will be expanded. If you have any tips that you recommend get added, please comment below. Many of these tips will depend on a wired or Wi-Fi connection to the internet. If you're not sure how to set up RetroPie or set up the network, I'll put a link below and above to help you with that. I hope you enjoy these tips and that you find them helpful. If you find it helpful, please give me a tip of your own by clicking the like button down below. I also welcome you to subscribe to Wagner's Tech Talk if you enjoy the content and want to see more. And with that, let's get started. If I go to Super Nintendo, here you'll see I have some box art for this particular console. I'd like to do the same for another console that I have here, the PlayStation. And I'm going to show you how. So, essentially what you want to do is hit Start on your controller, press A on Scraper, and then move down to Scrape Now. And by default, all systems are selected, which is fine. That might be what you want to do, but in my case, I only want to select PlayStation. So I'll move down to the bottom and select Select None, and then move up to PlayStation, press A, and then go back. And then where it says User Decides on Conflicts, turn that off by pressing A. Move down to Start, and now we're going to scrape just the PlayStation games. And as you can see, we're getting the artwork and additional game information. And now that it's done, all three are scraped, I can go back, and now I have the artwork. When you first install RetroPie, it comes with one theme. If you go down to the UI settings, and then go down to the theme set, you'll see the carbon theme. Well, we want to customize it with a new theme, so we are going to go to the RetroPie menu and then go into ES Themes. Make sure the network is connected on your Raspberry Pi 4. Either Ethernet or Wi-Fi will be fine. And then just pick the theme you want to install and press Enter. Once you do that, it will go out to the Internet and download the selected theme. And I'll go ahead and install several of them here. Alright, great. So now just tab over to cancel, press enter on your keyboard, and now we're going to hit start, go to UI settings, go to theme set, and here we have a whole bunch of themes. So we'll go ahead and pick the arcade one up, 5x4 horizontal, go back, and this is what it looks like. So we've totally customized the look of RetroPie with a new theme. I think that's pretty cool. This is what it looks like when you select a particular console. Here I'm selecting the PlayStation. And I'm going to show you one more thing that I really like. This is the Retro-Rama theme. And that's how you install and activate a theme. Next I'm going to show you how to create a favorites list. Hit Start. Move down to Game Collection Settings. A on automatic game collections and then simply check the ones that you want. Now I'm going to go ahead and select all of them including the favorites and then we're going to go back and then you'll see you have new options available to you. Last played, favorites, and all games. Let's go ahead and add some games to our favorites. So I'm going to go in arcade, I'm going to hit the select button and I'm going to jump to G and go to one of my favorites which is Galaga and I'm just going to pick one of the Galagas here. To add it to your favorites list, you just press the Y button. So now it's added to my favorites list. And let's switch over. I'll go to Atari. I'll pick Asteroids. 
press Y and we'll do it one other time for the PlayStation and I'll pick Gran Turismo press Y and we'll hit back so now let's go over to our favorites list and I'll press A and then here are all the games we added if you want to remove one simply select it and then press Y and it'll be removed from your favorites list or you can just press A and go ahead and launch the game and start playing it right from your favorites In this tip, I'm going to show you how to remotely connect from a PC to your Raspberry Pi 4 running RetroPie. This allows you to issue commands directly using an SSH connection on the PC over to your Pi. This makes copying and pasting commands that you find on the RetroPie tips page much easier. Now let's enable SSH on RetroPie. So we go to the RetroPie menu option here and select Raspy Config. Press the A button on the controller and then move down using your keyboard to interface options and hit enter on SSH. Then hit enter on yes to enable it and enter on OK. Once you do that hit tab to finish and hit start on your controller. Move down to quit and move down to restart system. Press A on yes and emulation station will restart. Next you'll want to make sure you know your IP address. If you don't know your IP address, go to RetroPie again and scroll down until you see Show IP. Press A on the controller and it'll show you your IP address right here. Be sure and write it down or remember it. Next, let's download PuTTY. The link is in the description below, so you can click that. So you go here and scroll down just a little bit and download in my case, I'm going to download the 64-bit installer for Windows, and we'll go ahead and install PuTTY, and hit Finish, and once you're done here, you just double-click on PuTTY, and then type in the IP address that you acquired earlier in the prompt, and make sure it's set for SSH, and you can save your session, so if you want to be able to come back to this easily, you can just enter a session name and hit Save, and then click the session and open. When you see this prompt, don't worry, just hit yes. To log in, you simply type pi, pi, press enter, and raspberry as your password. Now you can easily copy and paste any commands that you find on the RetroPie tips page. In this step, we're going to change the boot image or splash image that you see when RetroPie boots. This one. On the PC, type in backslash backslash and your IP address that you acquired earlier, and then go to the splash screens share and copy and paste in an image. I'll go ahead and drop in one for the Wagner's Tech Talk logo, and let's take a quick look at it. That's going to be our new splash screen. Okay, so now let's go into the RetroPie menu, and we'll go down to RetroPie Setup, and we'll scroll down until we see Configuration Tools, and then scroll down until we see Splash Screen, right up there, press Enter, and choose Splash Screen. We'll choose Option 2 and select the Splash Screen we just copied. Then we'll back out. and exit. From here we'll hit start on the controller, go down to quit and restart and we should see our new splash screen. And there it is. You can of course use this with your own splash screen. You can say John's Arcade or you know whatever you want. <laughs> Pretty cool way to customize your RetroPie. Before we dive in on 
how to make a backup, let's first ask the question, why might we want to make a backup? Basically, there's no reinstall of all the games and tweaks and artwork that you have downloaded previously. You simply make a backup copy and you can always restore it up to that point. Also, moving from a lower capacity micro SD card, say a 32 gig to a 256 gig micro SD is much easier. Just make an image copy of it and restore it down to your new micro SD card. Also, before running any major updates to the OS or RetroPie itself, it's a good idea to have a backup, so if anything goes wrong, you can always put everything back the way it was before you ran the update. Alright, so now let's start with how to make a backup. Okay, so now let's first download Win32 Disk Imager. The links are below for this. Click Download and go ahead and install it. Then click the Browse Folder icon and type in a name for the image. I'm going to call it RetroPie 46128GB.IMG and click Open. Now all you have to do is just click the Read button and it'll take the contents of the micro SD card, read it, and save it to the file that you specified. Once it's done, go ahead and click the OK button and exit. Let's quickly go over why you may want to restore from a backup image. In the case where you are migrating from a smaller capacity micro SD to a much larger one, you probably want to do that so you don't have to reinstall all your games and artwork and all that kind of stuff. So that's a good point. You want to go from a 32 gig to a 256 gig, no problem. You can just go ahead and restore your old image onto your new one. Another reason may be if you have any problems after an update or any strange issues that you can't resolve easily, then you can always restore from your, your backup. So those are two of the main reasons, and now we'll get into how to restore it. Going back to Win32 Disk Imager, just click the Browse Folder icon, select your image, and then click the Open button. Double check that the correct card is selected under the device, and click Write. Once the restore process is completed, then boot it up in your Raspberry Pi 4, then go to the RetroPie menu, go down to Raspi Config, and then move down to the Advanced Options, option number 7. And from there, what you want to do is select Expand File System. Now hit Enter on OK, and Tab over to Finish, and hit Enter on Yes, and your Raspberry Pi will be rebooted and the file system expanded. Next, I'm going to show you how to add some emulators that aren't actually on the system. What you do is go to RetroPie Setup, and from there, move down to Manage Packages, and then select Manage Experimental Packages, and then pick the package that you want. In this case, we'll go ahead and pick Redream, which is a Dreamcast emulator. Hit Enter on OK, and install from Precompiled Binary. It's going to ask if you're sure, say yes, and it will install the emulator. If you need to remove it, you can remove it from this prompt. Uh, we'll just hit back, back, and back, and then exit. Now normally you'd hit start on your controller, move down to quit, and you can restart emulation station and the Dreamcast will show up, but I'm going to show you something different. If you select quit emulation station and yes, this will bring you to a command prompt. So you could issue any commands here if you wish. In my case, I'm just going to reboot, so I'm going to type sudo reboot. Press enter and your Raspberry Pi will reboot. When emulation station restarts, you will then see an option for the Dreamcast. So we'll move over to the right. For the Dreamcast, you will have to install two BIOS files and of course your games. But yeah, it's pretty cool and uh, Dreamcast seems to run pretty nicely. We will cover it more in a future video. There's a cool experimental package called Web Manager that you can get for RetroPie as well. I'll show you how to do that, but basically you enter your IP and port 8000, and then once you do that, 
you can do all kinds of things right from a nice web interface such as checking the temperature of the processors you can see all four cores you can go to ROMs and see a listing of all your ROMs you can also upload ROMs as well one thing I want to show you here is if you go to available systems and click on a system that you don't have on here click add and it'll create a Dreamcast subfolder in this case so if we switch over to the PC you can see there's an empty Dreamcast folder I downloaded this Chrome extension Super Auto Refresh Plus which is pretty handy with this tool if you enable it then you can go in here and set it for two seconds and you can easily monitor the temperature as well as the CPU utilization on all four cores if you look below you can tell I've upgraded my micro SD card from 128 gig up to a 512 gigabyte and I'm only using 3% another cool feature is that you can import the BIOS files directly using this web interface here it's telling me I've got two BIOS files that are missing so you can just simply drag and drop them if there's any problems with the files such as this one it'll show you that the MD5 checksum was not a correct match pretty cool tool the only issues that I ran into is large files that you try and upload into the ROMs directory may be a problem such as the Dreamcast files but for most of the stuff it worked pretty good alright so let's go ahead and install the RetroPie web manager we'll move down to RetroPie setup and the first thing we'll do is update the RetroPie setup script so we'll move down to this option S and select yes and update the script everything's up to date so we'll go ahead and hit enter and enter again and then we'll move down to manage packages then we will select the experimental packages and scroll down until we see the RetroPie web manager and there it is we'll hit enter and enter to install from source then select yes and press enter and after a few minutes it'll install great now there's one more step that we need to do we will go back and back again and back one more time go down to configuration tools press enter and scroll down until you see the RetroPie web manager and then you want to start it so hit enter on start and if you want it to be enabled on boot of the Raspberry Pi go select option 3 to enable RetroPie manager on boot and press enter and that's it now we can go ahead and cancel out and go back and exit For this step, I highly recommend having a backup, as shown in the prior tips. So go ahead and make a backup before you run an update. That said, let's go ahead and perform an update. We'll go down to RetroPie Setup. Then we'll select Update and say Yes to update the installed packages. It's fetched the latest RetroPie Setup script, so we'll hit Enter. And then we'll hit Enter once again. In this case, I'm going to select no for updating the underlying OS. However, it's a good idea to do that at some point after you've created an image backup as shown in a previous tip. So I'm going to select no, and it's going to update all the installed packages at this point. Once done, just hit enter. And everything has been updated. At this point, it's a good idea to reboot or if you want you could just click exit however I highly recommend rebooting at this point thank you so much for watching I hope you got a lot of useful information out of this video my goal was to try and consolidate all the best tips that I could find and figure out for RetroPie all in one single video so you don't have to search for dozens more Thanks again. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you want to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I shall talk to you very soon.